Thanks for staying with us. We have the final pair of parents here, Mr. Daniel Dano. Welcome, Douglas Dano. Good to have you, sir. Uh, I also have a caller waiting, Mrs. Ifama. Let me let you say a few words before I bring in our final um, guest on this. Go ahead, please. Oh, I lost that call. Go ahead, Mr. Douglas. Tell us your own version. What happened? Was your child suspended? Oh, you're yeah, still on. I'm so sorry for my. Do apologize. Please say a few things. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, I don't know if it's right for me to say this is my first time calling. You. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, so, um, concerning this, this case, this case um, um, concerning the delusion and uh, her son out of school, is, um, I would say that I've been in somewhat similar situation when my daughter was in uh, Queen's College, Lagos. So the thing is this, first of all, that circular claim comes from the ministry. What they, what they usually do is they will not circulate to parents. They keep it to themselves, so they use it as a weapon. Secondly, for meetings, AGM meetings, they usually will not find the financial documents ahead of time for parents to read, understand, and have questions ready for them on that day. They will not do that. But instead, they will get parents who are kind of like... Um, supportive of their actions, mm. work with them to a meeting before the AGM and tell them, okay, you, we will call upon you to adopt the meeting, the minutes of the meeting, we will call on you to second the motion. And that is how these documents are adopted. Okay. They do not get the voice of the majority. I'm stating it clearly. These are issues I have fought from 2017 when children died in Queen's College, Lagos. The principal at that time was almost cutting off my throat to close out a WhatsApp group that I created for parents because we were always speaking against issues. How can you be in a school where you don't wash tank? Three water tanks that children drink from three, four years. Thank you very much, Mr. Fioma. I know, I know, I know you're very passionate about yeah. this, but and this is an issue that is that needs to be two or three shows. I have to let you go because I have to hear Mr. Douglas's uh, perspective on this. But thank you very much for sharing your own views. I think that gives us a clearer understanding of how these things go. But go ahead, sir. Let me let you. It was your own child suspended. Yes, it was. Okay. All right. I want to say that um, I want to come from a slightly different angle, please, because we have said so much about the PTA and all that. I'm just surprised that the representative of the school and probably the federal ministry to come and stand for what they claim to have uh, done rightly is not there. First of all, nobody took the federal government college anywhere, apart from one parent that decided to go to court. And in any case, the, the letter we saw from that the PTA chairman is claiming, we saw that letter about a year or so into this matter. Okay. It was not like we saw this letter before, even if we saw it. Personally, I felt this child has not committed any offense. Mm -hmm. The parents are not owing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing on ground to make these children bear responsibility for the actions. Of their parents. To start with, the EFCC or the court is not a shrine. They don't kill people there. Mm. It's not where they poison people and kill people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it should be an offense for somebody to approach the court for an action that he considers wrong, or the EFCC for financial matters. If you cannot go to the EFCC for financial matters, where can you go mm -hmm. for issues concerning financial misappropriation? Yeah. So nobody took the federal government college anywhere. Yeah. Not the principal, not the school, apart from one parent. And it was an, on another issue entirely. It wasn't concerning this, um, these matters. And when the, letter, when the, the principal came on board, he invited us for a meeting. We went to him for that meeting. We spent about one hour, 30 minutes. And all he kept telling us was, go and withdraw that matter. If you want your child to remain a student in ah, this school, ah, hi. I am saying it live on TV. If you want your children to remain in this school, go and withdraw that case. Who with said the this? Exactly. The principal. The principal, Dr. Kennedy. The president principal. The president principal. The president principal. Uh, or something like that. He said it to all of us. In fact, when he came, we wrote a letter reporting that our portals were blocked. That letter was duly acknowledged. Mm -hmm. We received, it was received. We thought maybe the meeting was about that letter. Mm. Nothing about that letter was mentioned. When we got to the meeting, he asked the barrister to, I think we asked the barrister to speak on our behalf to let him understand what has been happening, which he did. Immediately we finished. He said, can he advise us? We should go and withdraw those children. We draw this matter from the EFCC. If we want these children to remain in this school, that we are in court, 
and we are here now because these children are here. The same thing the PTA chairman is claiming now. It's the same mm -hmm. rhetoric that you are here because the children are here. If the children are no longer here. So who speaks on yeah. behalf of the Federal Ministry yeah. of Education in any of you? Who receives As I said, we had invited the principal and for whatever reason he couldn't show no, up. No, no, so I'm so. saying, you know, the Federal <laughs> Ministry is the regulatory body yeah. for unity schools. Yeah. We've had this with the QC in the past about the dirty yeah. tank that the caller mentioned and some embezzlement that happened yeah. within their PTA yeah. as well. And I didn't see the side of the federal ministry. Well, I want to believe that the present minister for education, Tari Maman, is an astute educationist. He was at the law school, as, you know, uh, ch chairman at the law school at the time. So I want to know what exactly is the Ministry of Education under his watch doing on this issue? This matter. Well, so many letters were written. When the whole thing started, even during the election, thing, we, we sent messages, even WhatsApp messages were sent to the, to uh, what, Binta Hajia Binta, I think she's the, Permanent secretary to the minister okay. there. And the only response I got personally was okay. That's what she just said hmm. for all the complaints. And we wow. didn't hear anything from them. After about seven, eight months, we now saw a letter that they purportedly came from, uh, came from the same, she was the same signatory to that same letter. So I don't know the channels that we're supposed what to go to. What was the letter? Was it saying that there's a punitive measure against parents who are in court? About their kids. Did it at any point I, I say that your kids will have to suffer for the consequences of you? Yes, he said they will have their children withdrawn from the school until these issues are resolved. And personally, I was like, this is not reasonable. Hmm. I didn't consider it was as something. Okay, so we have to wrap up. To your letter or was just a response to a letter to the school? No, it was a memo that was sent okay. to all FUCs. And funny enough, when the principal came on board in that meeting, when he asked them to go and bring the letter, he had not seen the letter. So I'm wondering if this letter was actually circulated to all federal universities. Uh, because, because, because of our colleagues. time, and we have to wrap up soon, what is your ask? Because the reason this matter is still on, because the kids are probably still suspended, I'm assuming. They are. What is your ask right now? Because we have this opportunity to discuss it, and hopefully I'll let the comrade come in afterwards. Well, I'll let you hear you, and then also Mr. Pyles, what exactly are you asking? What are your demands right now? And then I'll get the PTA chairman to respond to that. Go ahead. Well, the demand I am making personally is that... Um, these children's right to education should not be violated yeah. by the people that are supposed to enforce it and protect, and protect, and protect it. That's one. Then secondly, there's a, a little twist in my son's own case. Prior to his suspension, there was a little manipulation and a, a, what do I call it, setup yeah. with which he was suspended. They said the teacher came to school and uh, came to do exam, what's it called? Invigilate the examination and he, he minus five marks from some students that uh, were not behaving well in school, that the bag of that teacher was soaked in water by those students, and that it was my son that took that bag and gave the person that soaked it, that they connived together. Mm -hmm. All these things came three to four weeks after our meeting with the principal, where he told us that if we don't withdraw those children, that mm. we are here because these children are here. Mm. So it was a very direct threat. It yeah. wasn't something that was a... That we are here because, and when we met at the EFCC too, I remember they invited us, the parents, concerned parents, and they invited the PTA chairman and the PRO that we should talk. I said, well, for me, I think the PRO I was asking, I said, when these things, they, they had not yet come to pass. There was a threat of, the letter was there and all that. They had blocked their, blocked their portals and all. So we're asking, these portals have been blocked. They said they should go and talk to the school. That's the EFCC people now go and talk to the school. And then when we met, I was asking them, I said, as the PTA chairman and PRO, what did you do yeah, when all this thing was going on? Yeah. The PRO's response to me then was that this is a, a PTA chairman that they locked for two days or three days. We see the same person that will now go and be fighting for us. I said, was he locked because he didn't do anything? <laughs> why, why was he locked? I said, you are not talking like a parent at all. Mm, no. Are you sure you are a parent? Mm. Let me let the PTA chairman respond because I'm running out of time. Mm -hmm. So. You've heard the parents, and I'd like to say he's speaking on behalf of the, 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 the three parents that are affected. What are you going to do going forward from this, um, this show? Well, thank God for this type of program and the anchors, Murayo especially. Um, you give everybody opportunity to, to hear their views. It's in the public opinion, but there are rules and regulations that we should learn to follow. This woman has attacked me in office last time. She came to my office, she wanted to beat me up. Just because of what I, I, I wasn't the one who suspended the students and things like that. Well, the way it goes, 
the ball is in their court. We have told you all what obtains, even from the ministry and so on and so forth. They say they want to distract us, but we are not distracted as PT executive. What goes on abated? We are doing the little we can do to support okay. the school. All right, we have to wrap up now, but I must call out can, the. Can I, can I say something? Can oh I, yeah, like, like ten seconds, like yes, I run yes, out of time. Yes. Yes, my my take on this matter is this: the the ministry should please allow these children to go to school. OK. Exactly. I think that's fair enough. And I think that that's, that's the same thing I was going to say. Yeah. I have to call out the Federal Ministry of Education yes. to insist and ensure that these children return back to school, whilst the principal, which we also invited, could make it to ensure that this PTA, the buhaha going on right now, is resolved and so that they, they, none of these disruptions happen again for children anymore. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you.